در ارتباط با تحولات اخیر در پاکستان امشب آقای سمیل للوانی از مؤسسه بنیاد امریکای نو نیو امریکا فاوندیشن در استودیو ما حضور دارند Thank you for being here, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you for having me. The Pakistani people in their vote, they voted for two things. One was uh, a rejection of Islamic extremism, and one, the other one was the rejection of a military rule. Do you think that the new coalition government will tackle economic problems, social, political problems in that, con in that country? Well, they'll be hard-pressed to do so immediately. The first issue is that they have to work out the terms of the coalition, and that's expected to be a lengthy process. And one of the pitfalls of this coalition is that there's no love lost between the two leaders of the parties. Um, Nawaz Sharif's party previously had ousted the PPP twice during the 1990s, and um, under the second term of Nawaz Sharif, Ali Zardari served uh, in prison for quite a while. Um, so Nawaz Sharif is probably going to try to negotiate certain terms that are favorable to him, but it won't be easy, especially given that they have institutional constraints. They're both catering to different bases, and they'll be both serving in the coalition, and as a result, there'll be sort of a tussle over the spoil system that results from these feudal parties essentially governing. One of the um, problems, challenges, will be the corruption in Pakistan. How can they um, compromise with um, Mr. With Mr. Musharraf on this? Mr. Zardari has not said that whether he wants to dislodge Mr. Musharraf. Right. Well, there's there's concern about corruption within the military, um, especially during Musharraf's rule. Uh, but it shouldn't be forgotten that there has been rife corruption during the civilian-led uh, governments in, in the 1990s. Um, in fact, Nawaz Sharif can't serve as prime minister because of the corruption charges, and uh, Zardari is still f possibly facing them. So that's a pitfall that they they face as well, especially. Um, in their decision to reinstate the judiciary. It seems it's um, become a rallying cry for Nawaz Sharif to reinstate the judiciary to pose a challenge to Musharraf. But should the independent judiciary also begin to investigate corruption charges, I think both the coalition partners might change their tune in terms of how serious they are about establishing an independent judiciary and tackling corruption. We'll talk about Mr. Musharraf again. Uh, the army is the, one, the main pillar of a um, state and has a lot of um, uh, in economic uh, influence. What's the role you see for the army in Pakistan? Um, well, that's an interesting question. There's, there's been sort of two roles that the army has played. I mean, in the long, in the long run, over since the history of Pakistan, it has served as an institutional anchor. Uh, it's been the anchor of modernization for the country. Uh, when the India and Pakistan divided up, uh, the bulk of the military leadership uh, under the British Raj moved towards uh, Pakistan, and so they've been endowed with real. Uh, resources within the, the armed forces and as a result it's become the primary institution to guide uh, Pakistan's modernization. The trouble is recently, uh, especially in the last eight years, there's been a great degree to which the military and the uh, army have entered into the civilian sphere, into the economy, in part to manage it and they've done a reasonable job with it. They've posted 7 percent growth over the last uh, five years on average. But there's also a degree to which there's a great deal of corruption, um, you know, just passing around the spoils to former military officers and uh, sort of re really being steeped in the economy. Now, the new general, uh, Army Chief of Staff, Kiani, has been trying to walk that back in recent, uh, recent weeks, uh, in issuing sort of uh, requirements and restrictions on the degree to which uh, former officials can, you know, hold these posts and sort of tap into the Pakistani largesse. 
but um, the military is also going to be the most one of the most important institutions in the country, given that it's the central sort of broker between the United States and uh, you know fighting the war on terrorism for the United States, and it's received a considerable amount of like money for for the governments as a result. You mentioned Mr. Kiani. Kiani has the support of uh, the United States. Uh, let's go back to Mr. Musharraf again. Mm -hmm. He traveled to Europe to uh, gain the pledge of um, the Europeans in, in combating terrorism. One of his objectives was to uh, uh, give the impression he's the only hope for combating um, terrorism in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bush did not really commend Mr. Musharraf in his speech in Africa. What do you see his position in um, right now? Do you think that he has been able to convince his European or uh, Western allies that he's the only hope to combat uh, Islamic terrorism? Well, I think he certainly was able to maintain this myth that with before him or after him, if he's no longer sort of the man in uh, Pakistan for the United States, then the Islamists will take over. I mean, that myth has been punctured by the failure of the Islamists to win any significant votes in this recent election. I think he had the Europeans and, and the United States going for a while, and I still believe that the, those Western capitals believe that Musharraf is the critical liaison between the military and the civilians. In the past, um, we haven't had an, the ability to sort of direct the military um, or, or work with them in any significant capacity simply because the, there's been a disconnect between the civilians and the military, and Musharraf consolidated those two roles in one. Uh, now it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens and whether Musharraf still functions as that liaison or whether it just turns back to Kiani and whether Kiani becomes sort of the lead uh, role for, for the Pakistani military and Musharraf is essentially pushed out. I think there's a role for him to play as sort of the broker between the military and the civilians and also a check on the civilians, but that remains to be seen in the coming weeks. Thank you very Thank much you. for coming.